A new formula to determine Social Security check amounts. I have all the details and exactly what you need to know right here in the video. Let's get right into it. I right, know in this video, I do want to share with you the details of a new formula that they're talking about, which would be used to determine Social Security checks for beneficiaries. Now, this would actually be a good formula because it would be in the benefit of the beneficiaries. I know, surprising, right? It's not that often that they come out with a new formula or idea that's actually in the favor of the beneficiaries but in this case it actually would be beneficial for the beneficiaries and that's what I want to talk about here in the video as well as explain how this formula would actually work based on the current formula that is used right now to determine how much beneficiaries will get with that being said let's get into it and talk through all the details really fast before we do thanks for joining me if you have not done so yet make sure to do yourself a huge huge favor hit that subscribe button right down below the video it is totally free to do so and I'm here for you right by your side every single day advocating on your behalf doing anything I'm possibly can to keep you updated on what's actually going on and anything coming up right now that may impact you, your money, your benefits, your lifestyle, your bank account, and of course, anything popping up you can possibly grab and or take advantage of. It's a very busy time right now, and we know that Social Security will be reformed in a major way. What that reform is going to look like? Well, we don't know that quite yet, which is why we need to continue watching everything very, very closely, and why I'm watching all the headlines and any new announcements, bills, packages, proposals, anything else like that coming up. Again, I've got you. I'm here for you in any way that I possibly can be have been for about four years now and I will continue to be here for you every single day going forward that's my promise and my commitment to you and everybody here in the community and as always I'm sticking to it so again thanks for joining me please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet and let's get into it and talk about a new formula and what this means for the beneficiaries I know sounds a little bit scary at first glance like oh no a formula please don't touch anything just leave it alone if it isn't broken don't fix it let's just get into it and talk about it but like I said a minute ago, this is actually a better formula than you think it actually is because here's the thing. A lot of times we see these proposals or different ideas that come out that are not necessarily in the benefit of the beneficiaries, but in this case, it actually is a pretty cool thing, okay? All right, so let me explain the current formula that is being used as of right now, okay? So how they determine somebody's eligibility or basically how much money they're going to be getting as a result of their Social Security benefit check every single month is they use the 35 years of work history, right? Well, how many people have 35 years of work history? Not that many, right? There's not that many people that do because a lot of people don't uh, typically work for usually about 35 years. So again, any year that is not filled in with some number, as in if there's no work history, guess what? It gets filled in with a zero. Well, you know my stance on zeros and on averages, right? Anytime that you're calculating an average and there's a zero that makes in one of the places, that brings down the average significantly, right? So as a result of that, even any number put in that spa uh, space other than a zero would be beneficial. A zero is not a good situation because it really lowers the average pretty fast and it does not take that many zeros to lower the average significantly. So basically what they do is they do something, it's an acronym, it's A-I-M-E, Average Indexed Monthly Earnings. So basically what they do is they take your 35 highest years of income and they inflate it to current levels of inflation or current levels, right? To basically, so it's comparing apples to apples. Because here's the thing, let me explain this really fast. Let's just say that somebody worked back in, I don't know, 1975 or 1980. Do you think the purchasing power of the, of the United States dollar was the same back in 75 and 80 and 85 and 90? compared to what it is today? No, not even close, right? We know that the dollar and the purchasing power of the dollar is significantly less today than what it was 30, 35, 40 years ago. Well, as a result of that, it is not the same. $1 back then is not treated the same as $1 today, right? because of that reason, the purchasing power and the depletion of the money uh, over that long period of time. So basically what they do is they inflate the earnings from years ago up to current levels as of now, like the comparable levels as of now, right? So this is determined as AIME, again, that acronym, uh, Average Indexed Monthly Earnings, okay? So that's what they do. So they average all the indexed monthly earnings over the course of all these years, and then they divide it out by number of years, okay? Or basically by, by months, sorry. So they take all the years of earnings, they add it all up into get one really big number and then they divide it out on a monthly basis to determine the average indexed monthly earnings. Does that kind of make sense, right? So that's how you determine an average. So that's why I said earlier, having a zero in any of these places is not a good situation because that would significantly lower these averages, okay? 
So that's how they uh, currently use the formula as of now. Now, obviously there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's just kind of basically uh, the explanation to that. Now, here is the new formula that they have talked about and that they would want to implement here, okay? Now, again, this is actually a good thing. So let me explain the details. So what they would want to use is rather than taking 35 years of highest income and taking into consideration all the zeros, rather what they would do is they would use only years that people have paid in through Social Security payroll taxes. Let me explain. I know it sounds like the same thing. Like, isn't this the same thing? No, it's actually not. Here's why. All the years that would have zeros in this new formula would no longer be counted. Reason being, if somebody has zero as an income for a certain year, guess what? They didn't pay anything into Social Security payroll taxes. In this new formula, the zeros would be omitted, as in no zeros. It would only take into consideration the years in which somebody actually paid in through Social Security payroll taxes. In other words, they had an income, they paid in through Social Security payroll taxes, and now that year counts, okay? So even if income is, say, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000, whatever it happens to be, Yes, it would be included, but guess what? It's better than a big old zero. Does that kind of make sense? So all the zeros would be omitted, but yet uh, any income there would then be included. Now they would use the regular formula, formula again, adding all that income up over all those years, basically adding it all up, getting a big, big number, dividing it out by the number of months, and then they would have their AIME, that acronym that I shared with you a minute ago. And again, they would have that new uh, information there to determine the check amount for the beneficiaries. Now, how would this impact uh, monthly benefits? Well, here's why. Benefits, again, I'm gonna go back to the zero that I keep talking about, okay? Anytime that zeros are added in, it brings that average down. Well, as a result of that, for many people that do not have 35 years of income to account for, they're getting, they're getting these zeros in there, lowering their averages. Now with this new formula, if they omit all the zeros and only add up all the years in which money was paid in through Social Security payroll taxes, well, guess what? There's no more zeros. Therefore, the average would st uh, statistically be a little bit higher because zeros are not dragging it down, right? So it does not take that many zeros to bring the average down significantly. So this is this new formula that they're talking about. And again, they're just saying, hey, this would be more fair to actually calculate benefits. Not a bad solution, right? Because here's the thing. Not everybody has 35 years. Let me give you a quick example. Let's just say that somebody, I don't know, is, you know, 20 or 18 years old, right? They run out there, they get a job, they're super excited, and they work for, say, I don't know, five years. So now they're 23, right? They say, hey, I wanna start a family. That's probably pretty, you know, pretty um, normal for a lot of people or, you know, at some age, maybe it's not 23. I'm just saying, I'm just gonna make an example here, okay? Again, it could be 25, it could be 30, it could be 18, I don't know, I'm just saying. It's just different for everybody. I'm just giving this a quick example here. But let's just say somebody says, hey, I wanna take five years off and raise a family. Okay, fine. Well, guess what their income is for those five years? Zero, 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 zero zeros all across the board for those five years. Does that bring down their average for social security benefits? Yup, it sure does with the current uh, formula that they're using now, right? Now let's just say that the person is 28 and they say, hey, okay, I've raised a family, five years off, zero income, and now I wanna jump back to, into the workforce and I wanna have some income again. Okay, this is great. However, they got those five years hanging around there that they have of zeros of their income. Now, obviously, if they work long enough, uh, if they have 35 years you know, of service and things like that, then obviously they can wipe out the zeros. But in this case, if they do not, then those zeros would be applied because they're just using basically the 35 years of work history that they would need to suffice the 35 years. Does that make sense? So in this case, with the new formula, they'd say, okay, fine. You had five years off because you raised a family like most people do. That's totally fine. Not a big deal. We'll just wipe out those zeros because in this new formula, they don't count. Does that make sense? So overall, it would just raise the averages. It would raise the AIME, that acronym that I've talked about here in the video a couple times, and they would raise that up simply because the zeros would not be there dragging it down. So that is the whole purpose here. So interesting stuff, right? Now, again, this would be a great formula. Now, again, I want to point out very quickly, this has not been applied yet, but here's the thing. Now, again, I've seen some comments down below, you know, people reaching out saying, why are you talking about things that are not happening? Well, here's the thing. We don't know if it's going to happen. Here's what I do know for a fact. Social Security is going to be reformed. How is it going to be reformed? 
I don't know that yet. Do they know? They don't know that yet either, okay? That's why I continue to say it's very, very important to continue watching all this because we don't know at any point they're going to reform Social Security and what that reform is going to look like. There's a ton of different options on the table right now, but we know that it has a major, major financial situation ahead of us in about nine or so years, give or take a little bit. We're going to be seeing major cuts across the board to benefits, 23% cuts to benefits if they don't do something. Do you think something's going to get done? Yes, 100%, something will get done to Social Security. What is it going to be? We don't know yet. Do they know yet? No, they don't know yet either, right? So that's why I continue to bring this to your attention because we don't know what that formula is going to be. We don't know what that reform is going to be to the Social Security program either. Well, as a result of that, we need to know. We need to have an idea of uh, what's it going to look like? What is this change going to be? How is it going to impact the beneficiaries? It will impact the beneficiaries, which is why I continue watching everything and bringing it to your attention in these short videos because we just don't know. We don't have any clue, but anything uh, that we do see out there is a potential option of reforming the program. Well, I'm not sure about you, but I want to know anything out there that may potentially impact the benefits that may potentially impact your money, that may potentially impact your ability to continue getting Social Security checks. To me, that's very important. I want to know that, especially for the huge percentage of people, 40 plus percent of people, by the way, who rely on Social Security for the vast majority of their monthly income. To me, that's very important. To know the benefits may be changing, to know the benefits will be changing in a significant way, and how this may impact money for the people that receive it and rely on it on a monthly basis, to me, that's like vitally important. So anyway, that's why I continue watching all this stuff. At the end of the day, it's going to impact your money, your benefits, your lifestyle, how much money you get on a monthly basis, what gets deposited into your account and the lifestyle you get to lead going forward as a result of the money that you rely on from Social Security. Does that kind of make sense? So anyway, again, like I said, that's very important to me. Maybe it's not as important to other people. I don't know. To me, it would seem very important because at the end of the day, it's your lifestyle that's being impacted. So anyway, hope this one helps you. But again, I want to point this out really quickly. This is a new formula that's out there. Of course, I'm going to add this to the pile of all the things going on out there and anything may be popping up that could impact your money, your benefits, things like that. So again, do yourself a huge favor. Subscribe down below. Totally free to do so. And again, make sure to share this video with your friends on social media. Totally free. There's a share button right down below next to the subscribe button, share this video. Otherwise, go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel, including those that I have linked down below in the description or at the top of the comment section. And as always, leave your comments, questions, feedback down below. Until next time, enjoy your day. Have a good one and I'll catch you again later.